Well, good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Children's Church, October 25th, 2020. And if you have been looking at the calendar, you know what's coming up by the end of this week, right? So what do you think we're gonna talk about today in Children's Church? Well, I know that a lot of people love Halloween. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that and what it means and how a Christian can sort of take a Halloween scary message and make it into a message that's not about fear, but about love and God's forgiveness. Quick question, have you ever been scared? How many of you think that I have ever been scared? I can tell you, I remember when I was a little boy and I was at a school carnival and I'm walking around the school and I'm holding somebody's hand. I think it's my mom. I don't know what happened, but at some point I looked up and it wasn't my mom. And suddenly I started crying and this person who was a lady who knew me, but I don't remember who she was, she picked me up and she's looking for my mom and she just knew how scared I was because I didn't recognize who she was and I was lost. And then even as an adult, sometimes we get scared, don't we? I was in the army. I was in a place called Iraq and I was outside of my vehicle and I was just standing. I was getting a picture taken. It was so cool. And then suddenly I heard a shot. Somebody was shooting at me and a bullet ricocheted right over my head. Do you think I was scared then? You better believe it. Being scared is a normal part of everybody's life. If you think that you are the only one that's ever been scared, you're wrong. Go ask your mom and dad. They'll tell you they've been scared before too. But being scared is just something that allows us to get our minds working on why are we scared and how do we not be scared? Well, let's see what the Bible says about fear, shall we? Did you know this? The Bible says, fear not or do not be afraid or something similar 365 times. And do you know how many days in the year there are? Normally, you're not worried about leap year. 365 days, right? So literally every single day, you could look up a phrase in the Bible and it would be different from the day before and it could take you through the entire year. One verse or one phrase or one part of a verse for each day of the year because there's 365 references to not being afraid. That's how much God wants us to understand. We don't have to fear things around us. Well, that is our background. It's time for our Google story. Don't laugh. I know that's a bad joke. But before we do that, I want to read some verses and then we're going to tell a story about a very interesting man. All right. So if you can read with me, if you can't read, have mom and dad read out loud, maybe. But uh, we're going to read these verses together and then we will step right into our story. OK, it says and this is out of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 28 through 32. It says, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Ooh, that sounds like a scary verse, doesn't it? Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I, that's Jesus, will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. Now, that's a neat section of the Bible. And it got me thinking about what people think about for Halloween. And if not you, maybe your friends have already started this idea of being scary, trying to scare somebody, jumping out of the shadows and saying what? Boo, right? The world loves to say boo. I like to tease my wife. I hide and she comes around the corner and I say, boo! And she will jump or scream and then slap me. But you know how it is. You have fun with it, right? And so that's a fun thing to do. We say boo. But thinking about Halloween and thinking about the Bible and God, it got me thinking. The world says boo, but God says who? Who is it that can take that fear away? And so I want to tell you one of my favorite Bible stories. It takes place in the book of Luke, chapter 8. You can look it up and you can read it. Luke chapter 8, starting at verse 28. And I title my story, verse 26, I'm sorry. I title my story, Here, Piggy, Piggy. Now, you may be familiar with the story, but let's get a little background. Jesus, 
He has his disciples. They're going around doing some great things, telling all kinds of great things about God and the kingdom of heaven. And, and the people are starting to gather around and they're starting to really uh, ask Jesus to do a lot of things. And he decided that he just wanted to take a little break. And so he told his disciples, we're going to get in our boat. And we're going to go to the other side of the lake or the Sea of Galilee. And so they did. Now, what a lot of people don't like to re or don't remember about the story of dealing with the pigs is what happened on the way over to the pigs. Jesus is in this boat with his disciples and it's in the evening and a storm rises up. And these fishermen are so afraid of what's going on, they beg Jesus to help them. Do you remember what he was doing? He was sleeping, right? And he wakes up and he says, calm down. And he was talking to the winds and the waves and they stopped. The wind stopped, the waves went away and they were able to peacefully make their way to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And when they got there, they went to this place called the region of the Gerasenes. When they got there, they didn't know how much worse it could get than being scared on a boat. So you see, there was a guy who lived near the shoreline where Jesus and the disciples showed up. And the Bible tells us that he was under the control of many demons. In fact, they made him act crazy and wild. And people in town tried to lock him up. They put shackles on his hands and his feet. And yet he was so powerful, so strong, driven by these evil spirits, that he was able to break these chains. And so they drove him out of the city. They didn't want him anywhere near the city. And he lived in, in the tombs or the, the caves by the seashore. And he was somebody who nobody wanted to go near. He was scary. And so he kept everybody away because he was so scary. And yet he was also scared because he was under the control of the devil's angels. And that had to be a horrible experience. But... The Bible tells us that Jesus and his disciples, they came to the shore. And when they got onto the shore, here comes this man. And he comes to Jesus. And if I'm the disciples, I'm looking at my friends. I'm like, when is this going to stop? It's like its own version of Halloween. We're scared to death almost on the, on the Sea of Galilee. And now here's this freaky looking dude coming at us. He's all bloody because he cuts himself. Got long, gnarly hair. He... He doesn't have any clothes on. He's crazy. And he comes running down to the boat and Jesus steps out of the boat and then an amazing thing happens. The man talks to Jesus and he says, Son of God, Son of the Most High God, do not torment me, please. Now, why would Jesus torment somebody? Well, see, it wasn't the man himself actually talking. It was the demons who were inside. And they understood one very powerful rule. God is stronger than they are. The demons, the devil, very powerful. The angels who work for the devil, very powerful. But not when they come face to face with God. They have to submit to the authority and the power of God. And so this man, he's talking to Jesus and Jesus says, what's your name? He says, my name is Legion. Legion means like hundreds and hundreds and thousands of thousands. That's how the Roman soldiers used to be put in various groups of people. They were legions. And so he said, my name is Legion because so many of these devil's angels have been controlling my body and my life for so long. He had to have been so exhausted. And he said, so that's my name is Legion. And then the Bible tells us that he looked over to a, a field and he saw just a bunch of pigs. A bunch of pigs just, you know, rooting up the ground and doing their thing. And, and the man, Legion, one of the demons inside said, Jesus, please don't throw us into the great darkness. Instead, can we go into those pigs? Now you get that, don't you? Here's these demons who have been in control of this man's life for years, doing whatever they wanted to, never having to ask permission of anybody. But the second they come before Jesus, they have to submit. They, have, they realize that he is God Almighty. And they say, can you send us into the pigs 
instead of sending us into the middle of nowhere. And you know, Jesus granted their wish. And the Bible tells us that all these devil's angels, they exited the man, they left him, and they found these pigs and they entered the pigs. And you know what happened? The pigs went crazy. They started acting crazy. And then suddenly out of nowhere, they started running towards the lake, the Sea of Galilee, and they didn't slow down and they didn't slow down. And when they hit the water, boom, they all just went into the water and they all drowned. Bye-bye, piggy. Bye-bye, demon. They're gone. The man who was known as Legion, suddenly, he had a new life. He didn't have anybody inside controlling him like the devil, the devil's angels were. He was standing before Jesus. And he knew that at that very moment, Jesus had taken care of his life and given him new life a new life. His old life was gone. In fact, he, he saw it go away and those pigs were gone and they were destroyed. Jesus does that with our sin. And we'll talk about sin in a little bit. Sin is the one thing that keeps us from having a relationship with God. But once this man had his demons taken away, his sin cleared up, by Jesus, he became a whole new being. Well, don't you think something like that would make the local news? Man, if they had Facebook back then, they, somebody would have been out there just videotaping the whole thing, right? They would have tweeted it, they would have put it on Facebook, they would have, what? They would have put it on all the social media, right? It would have been a worldwide story in seconds. Well, in this case, it was the pig herders, I think, who saw what happened, were frightened, ran into the local town. They said, you wouldn't believe. You know that crazy dude? He's not so crazy anymore. You won't believe what we just witnessed. And the townspeople, they came out. And when they came out, they saw Jesus talking to this man. The Bible says that he was sitting with Jesus, talking to him. He was in his right mind. He was clothed. He was normal. That was because Jesus changed his life. And the people that came out, they were like, they were they were so afraid. They said, Jesus, uh, can you leave? We don't want you around here. You know, that's the way it is with some people. They know that God's powerful. They know what God can do. And yet they say, I don't want you. And that's sad. But this man who had all these demons control his life for so long, he knew that Jesus did something special that day. Well, when Jesus agreed that he would leave, and this guy said, Jesus, take me with you. Man, this is a great new life. And Jesus said something very cool. He said, no, I want you to stay here. I want you to go and I want you to tell others what happened. And that brings me back to the verses we talked about in the book of Matthew, remember? And that one, the first verse, it talked about, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, right? Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Well, that's God. You know, sadly, in our world today, there's a thought that goes out there that when somebody passes away, they automatically go to heaven. You know, that's not necessarily true. The Bible tells us there's only one way to get to heaven, and that one way is by having a, our heart, our sins forgiven, when Jesus comes into our heart, forgives us our sins. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. One way. Well, can we be good enough to get into heaven? You can be good all you want, but if you don't know Jesus, you don't have your sins forgiven, you aren't going to heaven. Well, you can be the worst person in the world, and maybe in the last second your sins are forgiven. Guess what? You can go to heaven because you've asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins. The one thing that matters is that we have Jesus forgiving us, forgiving us of our sins. And so God is the one that can send us to heaven, but he says, for those that don't, you know, have Jesus and don't have their sins forgiven, I can't allow sin into heaven. And that's what creates this great big separation. We'll talk about that in just a second. But the second part of that verse, remember what Jesus said to the man when he said, can I go with you? Jesus said, stay here, tell others about what happened. Let's read that verse 32 again. It says this, whoever acknowledges me before others, I, meaning Jesus, 
will also acknowledge them before my Father in heaven. He's telling this guy, be a witness for me. So this man who had been controlled by demons for years and years and years, been afraid, scared others, suddenly had a new life. Again, we don't have to fear because we have God with us. A couple of verses that I like from the Old Testament. One is out of Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10, and it says this. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God says he will do it all. He will take care of us. And then, just as the Israelites were moving into claim their land, Joshua was taken over as the leader after Moses had died. And Joshua's a brand new leader. And God, he goes to Joshua and he says, listen, don't be afraid. Joshua 1, 9, it says this, Have not I commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Why? Do not be discouraged. Why? For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And that's a neat thing for us to be able to claim that promise and have Jesus with us every step of the way. But how does that work? First of all, we have to realize that the Bible gives us very, very specific instructions on how to get to heaven. Jesus has to forgive us of our sins. Well, Mr. Tim, how do you know that? Well, it says in Romans 3.23 that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. None of us can reach God's perfection. And that creates, that creates just what we call a chasm, just a space, a big distance between us and God. But the Bible also tells us, probably a verse you know very well, John 3.16, that God loved the world so much. He loved us even though we were sinners. And he loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross to pay for our sins. Well, if Jesus paid for the sins of the whole world, everybody's going to heaven, right, Mr. Tim? Mm. The Bible says this. It says that the wages of sin is death. That means that's our paycheck for sin. If we don't have our sins taken care of, that separation is not taken care of. The sins are paid for, but we have to accept that gift. How many of you have ever had somebody offer you a present and you say, nah, I don't like gifts? That's just weird, right? Because we love gifts. We all love to get gifts. Well, God gave us the greatest gift. He said, I want you to live with me in heaven forever. And so I'm giving you the gift of salvation, eternal life, forever and ever. And then here's a neat verse that everybody can use, whether you're a little one or even people like me at my age, we can still use this verse to help us through every day. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Have you ever just fallen back? That's scary, isn't it? But if somebody says, hey, fall back, I'll catch you, and you do it, that means you trust them. And that's exactly what Jesus is talking about in that verse. Trust in the Lord. Lean on me. Let me carry you. Jesus died, the Bible says, he died on the cross to pay for our sins. And he was buried. And you know, people thought that was it. That was the end of it all. We killed this guy, this Messiah. But the Bible says on the third day, he rose up from the dead and he came back to life. And he's alive today. And because he did that, he defeated death. He defeated sin. He defeated Satan. Because Satan has no power over Jesus. Jesus defeated and because of that, we don't have to be afraid. He's with us every step of the way. From the time we wake up to the time we go to bed. And if you think there's a boogeyman under the bed, great. Ask Jesus to help you not worry about the boogeyman. It works. I used to do that as a kid. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day. And thank you so much for the Bible and how you often tell us we don't have to be afraid. You know that we as human beings can be scared of many, many things. But we thank you that you say you are always with us wherever we go. You're there to take us through the bad spots in life and you're there to carry us through those moments when we are just sad or depressed. And you're there when we are happy and excited about things that are going on. You're always there. Thank you so much for loving us and for giving us a spirit of power and not of fear. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.